Before we get into today's video, I do wanna let you guys know that this video is for educational purposes only. Please remember to be kind to everybody everywhere in your everyday life, in your home, in the grocery store, and especially in the comment section down below. Please do not show hate to anybody anywhere. Good morning, my lovelies, my beauties, my friends. My name is Christina and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, thank you so much for clicking on this video. I really hope that you will subscribe, stick around, take a chance and hearing some things that I have to say. And if you are a returning subscriber, y'all already know, y'all are my babies. So good morning, good morning, good morning. How is everybody doing today? I hope you all are having an amazing day. I hope you all have had a wonderful week. I hope everybody is doing well, healthy, and good. I've had a rough week this week, so tell me how about y'all's weeks. I hope y'all's week has been wonderful, and if it has been, please let me know down below. So in today's video, we're gonna be talking about a highly, highly requested topic. This situation is still developing, like literally while I was sitting here, setting up, getting ready to do this with you guys or for you guys, something new came out. So I'm just letting y'all know that I am filming this on Tuesday of this week of August. This is August 22nd, 2022. I'm filming it early this week because I want to go ahead and get part one out because I feel like there's going to be a part two, a part three, maybe a part four, and maybe a part five to this video if things continue to roll out the way I think that they will. Before we go any further, I did want to stop and thank today's sponsor, Upside. If y'all have not heard about Upside yet, you are truly missing out. Upside is a cash back app that you can easily download on either Google Play or the App Store, and it is so easy to use. Upside is gonna help you earn actual cash back on doing normal things that we all do, like going to the gas station or some restaurants and even some grocery stores. Now, I use mine mostly at the gas pump. Let me show you real quick. So the gas that I'm getting here, it is over $4 a gallon, and I'm about to get it for like $3 and 60 something cents. I'm about to fill this tank up, y'all, because it needs it bad. <laughs> As my gas is pumping right now, I just realized that under restaurants, my favorite Mexican restaurant on here has a deal. It's called El Paso Mexican Grill, and I can earn 15% cash back on my bill every time I go out to eat there, which is amazing. I love that place. It's me and my grandma's favorite restaurant. Literally earning and saving money for not doing anything different than you would be doing Anyways, you gotta get gas, right? You're gonna wanna go out to eat. But with the Upside app, you get to save money. Ugh, it's a win-win. And just from that one time at the gas pump, because I used my Upside app, I earned $5.40. The holidays are coming up and every penny counts. To get started, all you need to do is download the Upside app from either Google Play or the App Store. Use my promo code Christina Randall and you will get $5 or more cash back on your first $10 purchase or more. I mean, there's your coffee right there. Get to earning your cash back today. Day. Thanks again, Upside. So what I'm gonna do in this video, I'm gonna give y'all like a brief overrun of the story, and then we're gonna talk about where it's at, okay? And then at the end, I'm gonna tell y'all some of the theories, and I'm gonna tell y'all what I think as of now has happened, okay? So my opinions and stuff's gonna be at the end, so stay to the end if you wanna hear those. Before we get into the story though, I wanted to talk to y'all. A lot of y'all either have kids, maybe you have teenagers, or maybe you're older, right? And I know for a lot of us, you guys know I'm about to be 38 years old. You know, when we were younger, 16, 17, at my, me and my age, I was way too young. I was like 13, 14, 15 out going to parties. But like normal kids, teenagers, high schoolers, 16, 17 year olds, they go to parties, right? And a lot of us as older, we, we look back and we go, like, how did I survive that, right? And it's just a miracle that a lot of us are even here. So I really feel like this situation is just so relatable to so many people in so many different ways. But let's just start at the beginning. Kylie Rodney was born and raised in Truckee, California. She was raised by her mother, Lindsay, and her father, Daniel, and she has an eight-year-old little brother who just thinks the world of her. 16 years old, graduated high school at 16 with 
honors, okay? I did hear some stuff online that said that the part of Truckee, California, where her and her family live was kind of like a rural area and maybe even considered like off grid. But Kylie is just known to be a good girl. Lots of family, lots of friends. I mean, the type of girl that her friend's parents love her too. Kylie is described as a sweet smile, 5'7", with blonde hair and beautiful hazel eyes. She had a cute little nose ring and a tattoo that said 17 on her side. And even though she had just finished high school, she did want to go off to Sierra College and continue to follow her dreams. And right around this time, on August 6th, the community teens had planned a party. Now, this was something that was, you know, typically done out there. Now in this part of Truckee, California, it's a lot of woods. It's like lakes, it's, you know, a dry area. So a lot of the local youngins would get together and make plans to hang out in different areas, you know, by the lake or in the wooded area. And they would leave their car doors open. They would listen to music. Sometimes they would even smoke and drink and do things that they weren't supposed to, but come on. We've all been there. So some of Kylie's friends got together and decided that they were going to throw what they called an end of the school year party that was going to take place on August 6th of this year, 2022. Now, it doesn't really make sense because the end of the school year was months prior. Some people said it was the end of the school year party. Other people said that it was the beginning of the school year party. Some people said it was a going away to college party, but nevertheless, this party where they were gonna all hang out near the Prosser Family Campground in Truckee, California that is just north of Lake Tahoe. Now it is said that this area that this party was gonna be at was just right down the road, which right down the road in the country, you know, minute within minutes down the road from Kylie's house. So this was not an abnormal thing. But what did end up being abnormal was the amount of people that heard about this party taking place on August 6th. Now word traveled fast and it seemed to be that people from different high schools all over the place were making their way to this party area in the woods of Truckee, California. It is later said that there was anywhere from 200 to 300 kids there partying, which I would have been loved to have been the mama to busted that thing up. What are, how old are you, sir? Let me see your ID, 34? hands behind your back in the back of the cop car because it is said now that there were actually adults there as well in this party full of people celebrating the end of the school year. Well, with all these people came a lot of extra things and it is said that there was a lot of drinks, there was a lot of smokes, and there was a lot of other things that were going around at this party. And allegedly they couldn't even start a fire out there because it's too dry. So it's dang near pitch black unless they've got their, you know, their headlights on in their car, their doors open, their music playing. But you can believe one thing, I'm pretty sure most of them were not out there playing checkers. They was out there partying. Now, sweet, precious Kylie and her friends had gone to parties before. I mean, again, she was a good girl. Her mother very much trusted her. She never drank and drove. She actually had some friends that would come up later to say that they remember other parties. Like she was the one who would never drink and drive. So her mother had no issue with her daughter that had worked hard to finish high school to go to a party with her friends. Now there's a surveillance video from a local business that shows a video of Kylie there at around 6.08 p.m. She was wearing these cute little baggy jeans with a belt and a black bodysuit with her hair flowing. She was also driving a silver 2013 Honda CRV. Now Kylie's friends would later say that she was drinking along with a lot of them and that I heard one of her friends say that there were some older guys there that were kind of pushing on them. The only 10 minutes that I was there, I literally had a group of five guys try to come get me to take as many like um, bomb rips as I could, uh, like forcefully without my boyfriend present. Some of Kylie's friends went ahead and left. Kylie's ex-boyfriend Jagger said that he had texted her and said, be safe, don't do anything stupid. And then he later texted her again, complaining about his day and that Kylie texted back at around 10.30 PM saying, oh, I'm sorry that you're going through that. And that would actually be the last time that her boyfriend Jagger would ever hear from her. Now, Kylie's mother, Lindsay, said that Kylie had texted her at around 11.30 p.m. that night, saying that she was gonna leave the party and that she was coming straight home. Now, I want you to imagine this mom. 
Okay, she's so proud of her baby girl. That is her first born. 16, she has watched this girl work her butt off to graduate high school with honors early. She trusts her daughter. When her daughter texts her and says, Mom, I'm going to be home in 45 minutes, she knows it. All right, baby, I'll talk to you then. I'll see you then or I'll see you in the morning. I'm going to bed. She doesn't have a doubt in her mind that her daughter that's just right down the road will not be home in 45 minutes. Kylie's mom said, I told her to be safe and that I loved her. And she said, okay, mom, I love you too. Now Kylie's mother woke up the next morning and oh, I got chills. And Kylie wasn't there. She looked in Kylie's bedroom. She wasn't there. She looked outside. She did not see Kylie's vehicle. And she began to panic, obviously. Where is she? Now, I can only imagine the things that she was thinking, and I don't know, and I'm just guessing. She's thinking, did she fall asleep? Did she go home to a friend's house? Did she, did she drive a friend's vehicle home? Did she get into an accident? Like, where is she? This isn't like her. And so she called the cops and she reported her daughter missing. Now, the sheriff's office didn't issue an Amber Alert. They said it only met three of the four conditions, that there is no evidence that she was abducted. They went out there and they searched the area. Now detectives interviewed between a third and two half of the people that were at the party. One of the detectives said that although our detectives have interviewed over a hundred party goers, they would still like more cooperation. People aren't talking to us, according to one of the sheriffs at the sheriff's office. A lot of the people from the party may be in college or may be about to start college, and they're afraid that it will ruin their future in some way, somehow. Now, Kylie's phone pinged near the campgrounds at 12.33 a.m. The ping for the data points was near the water. Now, it's hard to tell an exact pinpoint, Captain Sam Brown said at the press conference Saturday, but just because it was last pinged there, that doesn't mean that that's where the phone stopped pinging. Now, of course, word starts traveling fast. Everybody's going, where's Kylie? What did you see her? Da, 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 da. Almost 300 people there, somebody had to see something, but nobody was saying just about anything. Nobody said, yeah, I saw her. Now people said, I talked to her this, I told her this, and we're gonna get to some of the things her friends said, but nobody could literally say, yeah, I drove her home, or yes, yeah, she drove me home, or I saw her get in her vehicle and leave. And the cops knew that with that many kids there, somebody knew something, and her car was missing too. That Honda that we talked about earlier, it vanished, okay? Now those don't typically just vanish, right? If she was abducted, what happened to her car? Now authorities started to search the campground using helicopters and ground crews. The FBI even got involved. The lake reaches 57 feet deep with low visibility, making it difficult to search in some areas. Now people started calling in the tip line. I mean, they had over 1,800 people call in tips. And listen, we always wanna call in tips if they are good tips, okay? We, they're good tips. We don't wanna say, hey, I was at Waffle House in New York and I seen a blonde girl and she had on a black shirt. It, it, it looked like Kyle if it was not, you know what I mean? Now things started getting super messy online because a bunch of sea theories started flying. People started looking at Kylie's friends and I'm here to tell you right now, some of her friends was doing some weird stuff, okay? I saw some interviews with some of her friends that I was like, it seemed weird. I just want her to come back and be okay and just to know that she's loved and that we all, you know, like looked for her and that we all loved her through this and stuff. First day that she was missing, I mean, I was literally in a car for 12 hours looking for her. Um, yeah, but now I've just mostly been here just trying to you know, organize everybody else, and I've been working a lot with, like, the police. I was one of the last people with Kylie, and I am just desperate to do anything that I can to bring her home. I just want to make sure that we're doing everything that we possibly can to try and find her. She was having a fun time at a party, just being a teenager. Everything she drank, I drank out of, and there was nothing that seemed off about her. There was a lot of guys that did approach us. Definitely, I was getting a gut feeling during that that party that something something just didn't feel right with the amount of people that were there and how old some of these people were from the amount of people who did show up i it was scary it was really scary like you couldn't tell whether her friends were 
actually trying to help or if they were trying to be in the media. I mean, young adults, a lot of, a lot of them, and I'm not saying these people in particular because, you know, I'm sure there's people that were really just really trying to help, but they want to be known for something and some people it seemed like this was their chance and because of that people had a lot of speculations about it online sammy smith who's 18 years old claimed to be best friends with kylie i'm not gonna go too much into too much into all of these theories with these people because a lot of them are young you guys can go and look them up yourselves and i don't want to be wrong now she hosted a teen to teen talk to promote that the kids that were at the party to talk about it without the parents or without law enforcement. Because see, the police had done come to them and said, listen, you will not be in trouble for anything. You can come to me and tell me you were taking this, you were doing this, you were popping this. You're not going to be in trouble, but we need to know what happened to her. But still, nobody was talking. So Sammy did an exclusive interview with the son. And she claims that she was the last person to see Kylie or speak to Kylie, which, follow me here. She said that she was gonna ride home with Kylie, but she saw that Kylie was quite drunk and acting really inebriated and these older guys were making her uncomfortable and she was another one that was saying that and it was sketchy and it wasn't the type of party she wanted to be at. So she actually went ahead and went home. Now, a lot of people had a problem with that because they're like, hold up girl, if that's your best friend and she's 16 and you know she's tore up and there's a bunch of sketch people there, why'd you leave her? And as an adult, we know this, but you put your mind into a teenager and sometimes they just wanna get out of there, okay? So I, as much as we all wish she would've grabbed her friend or put her in the car or whatever and took her with her, she, she made the best decision at the time that she thought she could and she left her there. Now, Sammy would go on to say that there are hundreds of videos and pictures from that party. Oh, here we go. And that one picture shows a potential fight happening and Sammy says that there were friendly fights going on for entertainment. And so as you guys can see in this photo here, you can see it's like car headlights and it's just a bunch of kids hanging around in their shirts and their sweaters and their pants and stuff and just chilling with what looks like a lot of trash on the ground. Now, the issue is there's allegedly no photos of like Kylie that's popped up that that's been of any help, which seems super strange. Ain't a lot to do except for stand around and watch, you know, everybody hang out and talk and possibly some fights or whatever. You can't tell me that there aren't no pictures or no videos. I mean, show me a group of teenagers that are not like this constantly and I'll give you a, a Jolly Rancher because it don't make no sense. But nevertheless, no photos have turned up about her like that yet. Now there's a girl named Mags Larson and she also claimed to be Kylie's best friend. She rode with Kylie to the party but left with her boyfriend after 10 minutes because a group of five guys surrounded her and tried to get her to take the rips that we were talking about. Can you imagine? She's with her boyfriend. There, five guys surrounded her and was like pushing it on her. Well, on Sunday, August 21st, about a couple weeks after she went to this party and went missing, and you guys got to know her parents were sick. Her grandparents, oh my gosh. She was gone. Her vehicle's gone. Like, this ain't making no sense, y'all. A YouTube group, which is actually a dive group that has a nonprofit organization named AWP is what everybody calls them. And they are Adventures with Purpose. And I will leave them linked down below. Go check out their channel. I just heard about them since this case and I've gone down the rabbit hole. I've watched like three or four videos. They're really, really good. They saw this case or heard about this case and I'm assuming we're probably getting mad, mad, mad requests for their help. They decided that they were gonna go and use their expertise and try to search the lake one more time. Now, this is where things get funky dunky, okay? And I want y'all to know that everything that I'm gonna say here is in my opinion. Y'all, please go do your own research, form your own opinion because I was not there and I do not know these people, but I'm gonna tell y'all exactly what I think because I've been watching these press conferences and had steam coming all the way out my ears and my nostrils at the same time, okay? AWP said that a law enforcement agency reached out to them and asked them to come and help them because AWP has equipment to see underwater that the police and the investigators don't have. We're gonna get there too, so hang with me. Now, I think, since after everything, I think that AWP are complete angels, and I think that they did not want to embarrass 
the people that were searching for her and say that they decided to come and help. And so therefore they said that they were requested. I could be wrong, but that's what I think. I think that they just decided for whatever reason they were gonna come and help. They go down to the lake. Now, I watched the press conference with the police. They talked to the police. It is rumored that the investigators that were over this said, listen, we've searched that lake, honey. We've searched it up and down. There's nothing in there. You don't need to look in there. There's nothing in there. There's nothing to see. We had dive teams diving down and all of that. And AWP allegedly said, okay, well, we're going to search too. Can you show us, you know, where you're at? So the police said, sure. Have at it. Here's our paperwork. Here's our pings. Her phone was last pinged by that lake at 1233 in the morning. And that was the last place she pinged and her vehicle's missing. So why not search it again? It's what it seems like they were thinking. The police weren't down there with them. Okay, so they decide to get down there in their little dinghy that they use or their boat. And they have this super high tech equipment, which is incredible. And they're very well trained and it didn't take them but a second. And they found a vehicle. They dove down in only 14 feet of water. So you're talking 14 feet of water and then you got a vehicle like this so it's not that far down and not that far in from that spot. They dive down, they look at the license plate number, they match it up and it is Kylie's Honda. They made this Facebook post right here saying that they had found her. Now, of course, they had to turn it over to the police, let the police know and all of that stuff. Now, the investigators would later in the press conference say that they found out that AWP had found the vehicle by the Facebook post. Who received the first call from Adventures with Purpose and what was that call like? I don't know that we received a first call. I think we reached out to them after we read it online. And <laughs> so I'm not sure, you know, I mean, again, with 150 law enforcement officials, it's possible that a call came in and something happened, but from the Unified Command and talking with my partners, uh, none of us were aware of an initial. So we tasked the investigative sergeant with contacting them and reaching out. So I believe, best I know, we did that proactively on our end. And they contacted the family? I think there's still some sketchy details on, on exactly how that contact went out. Um, so I don't wanna speak on behalf of the family. I don't know how true that is. There was some shady little shade, I thought, being thrown, but we're going to get to my opinions on that. So just keep rolling here. But there was a private investigator there with them and they, you know, notified everybody. The, they had to notify the father and stuff that was there. And the story that the private investigator told about the father and them running over was just horrifying. They ended up pulling the vehicle out of the water and it was a sad day. I mean, her family, her friends, everybody in the community just absolutely devastated. But things seem to be weirder because why didn't the police find it? Now hear me out. I'm a supporter, a big supporter of law enforcement, even though they've done put plenty of handcuffs on me, we all know. But still, I was in the wrong. I'm a supporter of them, the ones that do the right thing, which I actually believe is the majority, okay? But something's wrong here. If they spent thousands and thousands, I think 15,000 hours looking and they could not find her right off of the spot that she pinged only 14 feet down. You guys, my son is 10 years old and he dives 15 feet down in rocky waves in the Atlantic Ocean and catches lobsters and he's 10 with no training. Now, I don't understand how they did not, where they weren't able to find this. Now, now it is alleged they don't have the equipment and the training that AWP does. And I understand that, but that's another problem. Why don't they? Why don't our law enforcement have the training and the, they should have the best equipment, okay? Now, I got a lot more opinions I wanna say, and I'm not saying that's these boots on the ground cops' fault by no means, but it's somebody's fault higher up while they, can, they can't do this. They can't find somebody 14 feet down. Okay, I'm gonna move on from this. So as of today, 30 minutes before I started to film this, they release that the autopsy shows that it is indeed Kylie that was in the vehicle. Now there are rumors going around and it, some people said that she was in the back seat strapped in her seatbelt. I don't know if that's true or not, okay? She could have easily drove in there, but there's a lot of questions. It, she had to have drove, if she drove herself into that river, she had to have drove through the sand, 
Were there no track marks? Because her mother reported her missing the very next morning. They would have still been somewhat fresh, okay? Those are questions that I have. Also, her vehicle was found flipped upside down. Now, I do know, depending on how the vehicle goes in, they can, because of the weight, turn, but it seems weird, right? It just seems like, how did it turn? How did she, did she fall asleep? Did she wake up? Was she put in there? You know, I'm gonna tell y'all what I think happened. I think somebody gave her something there, and I think she did, and uh, accidentally, I think somebody gave her something, Y'all, when I was 16 years old, I went to so many parties. If somebody put something in my hand, I put it like that. It is a miracle that I'm sitting here to tell y'all these stories. And I know a lot of y'all too. We just, okay, cool, party on. You know, like I just, I think somebody gave something to her. And I think, I think she, and I think somebody freaked out or somebody's and they put her in the vehicle and decided that's how they would get rid of it and got it in the water. And I could be wrong. Now, it is also fully possible that Kylie, who could have possibly been inebriated, took a wrong turn and drove herself into the water. Now, Kylie is from this area and she does know these roads very well, but when you add substances in a very, very, very dark campground, it is possible that she was driving the wrong way. I'm having a harder time with this theory though, but it could be what exactly happened. It could be a freak accident. Now, driving into the water, you would think that she would just get out of the vehicle, but it's actually not that easy. And I'm going to show you guys this here real quick because it could be helpful to you in the future. An estimated 400 people die each year because their cars are trapped in water. And it turns out many of us are doing exactly the wrong thing in that moment. We roll up the windows and hope for an air bubble or call 911. But tonight, ABC's Lisa Stark is going to show you a demonstration of the right thing to do if your car is sinking and the 30 seconds that can save your life. What you're about to hear are actual 911 calls from people in sinking cars. Help me. I got fire department oh going. I don't know what to do. The car is sinking. It's my life. It's up to my life. It's going down fast. I can't get out of the car. Here's the headline you must remember. You have to get out of the car before it sinks. That means you likely have under a minute to get out. Speed is the key to saving your life. It says it's too late to try to push a door open when the car's underwater. So this Florida dive team shows what can be done. Okay, guys, ready to go. Let's start the clock in real time. A second after hitting the water, seat belts off, then windows down. Within eight seconds, both front seat passengers are out. Water now rushing in the back seat. Passengers scramble. In some cars like this one, rear windows won't roll down all the way. The escape is out the front. Everyone is safe, all in under 20 seconds. So as you can see, it's not just that simple to get out of a sinking car. But who knows really what happened? I also wonder, you know, if her windows were rolled up, why she didn't use her phone? Because in those videos, the windows were down. So of course the water billowed in there much quicker. But I found this other example of driving into water while it's raining outside. And this person had the windows rolled up. And at after five minutes, there was still so much part of the car that did not have water in it. So it's strange. Also, I found photos of when they pulled Kylie's car out of the water. If you look at the windows, it looks like the window had been busted out because there's a little bit of glass still left there. But if you look at the passenger side back seat window, it looks like it was rolled down. Also, if you look there on the driver's side, the side view mirror is broken off and there looks like there is a ding in the driver's side door. Now. When I looked up other cars that had been pulled out of lakes, none of them that I found had that side view mirror broken off. Cause I was trying to figure out if that's from the water pressure, but it doesn't look like it's from the water pressure. So what happened? It's so bizarre. Autopsy is being done. And one of the questions a lot of people have is, is there water in her lungs? You know, was she alive when she went in, in into the water? Was she passed out at the wheel? 
I don't know. There's a lot of people that think that that text message that she sent her best friend was sent by somebody else. But I, I don't know. It seems strange. It could have been at that right time. She could have been inebriated and just drove, you know, straight into the water. I mean, it was so dark. I mean, it's hard to see anything. There's no street lights or anything out there. So it could have very well happened. But how did nobody hear a vehicle going into the water? You know what I mean? You got to you gotta expect that it's going to make some sort of noise. It's weird, you guys. What do you think happened? I will tell you this. If there's teenagers or kids or young adults out there that know something, you can believe one thing. Somebody's going to say something, and you better believe that you tell the truth if you get questioned because at the end of the day, them handcuffs go on one set of hands at a time. I know telling y'all from my personal experience that lived a very ride or die, no snitching type of lifestyle, I don't recommend getting in trouble for nobody. I think you should tell the truth. And it could just be a really bad accident. Man, this is so devastating. My heart just hurts for her family. You just think about her parents that just raised this baby girl. You know, they just, they just watched her graduate high school. She was so excited to go to college in one party. One party, and she texts her mom, I'll be home 45 minutes. Okay, honey, I love you. I love you too. And the next morning, she's gone. Devastated. Y'all keep her family and her friends and loved ones in your prayers. I'm going to keep y'all updated because I think there's going to be more to this, and maybe there won't be. But either way, y'all pray for her family, please, and let me know what y'all think down below happened. And other than that, you guys have a wonderful weekend. I will see y'all next week. Thank y'all so much for being here, and I will talk to you soon. Love you guys. Bye. We are, we are dreaming.